Simon, could we please stand for prayer? In the manner in which you are most comfortable, follow along silently. Surely I am being turned to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to he who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he in this am I commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me into the best of morals, for none guides to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And O Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful. As thou didst make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified. I mean, you may be seated. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful. We give praise and thanks to Allah for his coming and appearing to us in the personage of Master W. Fard Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We thank him for traveling 9,000 miles to come seek and save that which was lost. That is the black man and woman in the hells of North America. A very arduous work, but he attained to it. He stayed with it. Because he was looking for a man that after three and one half years of his sojourn among us, a man that he could deposit his very mind into, a man that would have enough of the original materials in him that it, he would not break, he would not falter, he would not leave his post. That's right. A man who was so committed, so in love with you and I that he would take the brickbats, the mud slinging, and all the bad talk from the people he came to raise. But the man that he raised that didn't leave his post, that took all of our insults and, you know, the tearing down of him was a Georgia-born black man. He was born Elijah Poole, but because of the wonderful work that he was doing among us, he became known as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Praise be to Allah. I applaud that myself because of him we are here today. And dear family, let me just say I never had the opportunity to meet Master Fard Muhammad, and I never had the chance to meet the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but the man who is the embodiment of them both in this dispensation of time that we are in right now, the man who is causing me to fall deeper in love with the teachings and with the man that walks among us because he is connected to those first two, so my love extends to the both of them because he shaped, they shaped him with their hands and left for us as a gift. That man that walks among us today, he is that messianic figure. He's bold, he's courageous, he doesn't laugh when it's not funny, he doesn't bend when he doesn't want to bend, and he certainly does not scratch where he does not itch. He is our illustrious leader, the example, shining example for male and female, anyone who is willing to listen to him, they become as he is. And the man that I'm speaking of, he is that messianic figure that walks among us in the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their names that I greet you all once again, <laughs> brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. I salam alaikum. <laughs> all praise belongs to Allah. Sometimes, family, I, I, I stumble with the words sometimes because I want to say something, you know, so inglorious about the man and the men who have caused us to see ourselves in a different light. No longer do we have to call ourselves, you know, uh, 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 porch monkeys, uh, Negroes, niggers, colored people, coon, shine, ham bone. No, we are the original people, the black man and woman of the original people of this earth. This is our home. And because of them, we can look at ourselves, hold our heads high, hold our chests out, walk strong, walk heavy on the earth because they reminded us of who we are. And not, not only did they remind us, they gave us an example. Come on. And I go right back to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That man is awesome. Even he's 90 years old, 
but he has the ability to do what grandparents and great grandparents can't do with their own youth. He can attract them. Yes, Farrakhan has the youth. A beautiful black man who, when he speaks, the young people listen. And you know, we, we were young ones. Could anybody talk to us when we were out there and we were at the zenith of our physicality and what we thought we knew in our mind? You know, our parents was talking to us. Boy, don't do that. Don't hang out with them. Don't drink this. Don't be smoking that. Did we listen? Don't raise your hand. Don't say nothing because I already know the answer. Because uh, Brother Joseph ain't saying nothing, uh, nothing that he, a jacket that he hasn't worn. I'm, I've worn that jacket. So, yeah, we know. We didn't listen. But it wasn't until a situation or a circumstance that we had been warned of by our parents that we could hear their voices resonating in our ear. Mama told me that. Daddy said that to me. And now you start to realize, boom, that they were talking truth. They were giving you real talk. Well, that's the way the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is. He can do that with the youth today. Y'all brothers in the back, all of us. He can say what we need to hear, not just to tickle our ears, but to elevate our consciousness, to make us put us on the, as, as, the, as the prayer says, the Surat al mustaqim the straight path of Allah. Put us back. Well, uh, you, you didn't know you were on, a, on the crooked path? What did the prayer say in, in the opening just moments ago? Surely I have been unjust to myself. Well, what was the injustice that you did to yourself? Well, you put things into your body that shouldn't have been there, that uh, didn't improve your health, but tore your health down. I mean, I, we don't have to go into the drugs or, or, or the alcohol. Let's just go to the meat. We was eating the wrong kind of meat. Anybody ever ate pork? Don't raise your hand. I already know the answer. You ever had bacon? You ever had ham? You ever had chitlins? Pig feet? Oh, frown your face up, but it's all right. Some of us know what that is. Some of us walked <laughs> through that. But Allah allowed us to come through it because the good news came to us. The good news came to us in a man. And that man was God himself. So I'm, I'm saying all this to lead up to our study group on Fridays, self-improvement, the basis for community development. We would have still been eating this if somebody, all those things that I just named, we would have still been drinking, smoking, you know, uh, chasing women, chasing men. And you got to say that today. I heard the Honorable Louis Farrakhan say it this way. He said, you know, um, I eat, try to eat the best food when he had his, you know, situation with the cancer. He said, I eat the best food. I have the best cooks. I live a clean life. He said, I don't eat, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chase women or men. They were like, whoa, yeah, you got to say that today because, you know, y'all know what's going on out there. Come on now. I ain't, I'm not mocking anybody, but this is the reality that is among us today. We're walking in Satan's mind. And when you're walking in Satan's mind, every and anything goes. Whatever God says don't do, Satan says it's okay to do. Yeah, I mean, I heard a man just recently talk. I'm going to come back to my point. A man just recently, I was watching a YouTube short. He pulled out some bananas. They were as green as those chairs. And he says, never eat the yellow bananas because they're not good. You have to eat them when they're green. Blend them up and put them into the smoothie. If you eat green bananas, don't that, you'll be like a helium balloon. You'll be ready to explode. But he didn't say that. No, no, no. We want the bananas for the potassium. You know, when they, okay, they're good. Maybe they're not uh, all the way right when they're all yellow, but when they start to get those little dark spots on them, that's when the potassium count goes up. But he didn't say that. See, the devil is a liar. And this is another thing that we've been self-improved on, that we can identify the liar when he comes among us. No longer do we take what he say on face value. Why? Because the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has pointed that out to us. He said, no. He always teaches us, and what he teaches us, he always gives us a reference point so that we can go look at it ourselves. He never leaves it out there to say, give us something and just leave it hanging. He said, no, go and look at this. I remember a time the Honorable Louis Farrakhan gave us a book list. How many of us remember that? We had a book list. I mean, there were books, there were some were by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, some were by other authors, white authors. I remember one, uh, Behold a Pale Horse. He made that prescribed reading uh, by way of deception, the making of a Mossad officer. He said, well, what's Farrakhan doing? No, he was letting us know that everything that he was telling us had a reference point, and he was taking us to those reference points. 
Just go back and look for those books because we still need them today. Everything that's going on now, the minister has already warned us about. How many of us remember um, what are the, the, uh, the one year, uh, the time and what must be done? Do we ever revisit that? We usually on Wednesdays, we still have those meetings as far as I, as far as I know, yes, and from headquarters. But even if you don't, you can pull them up on YouTube. He talked about every subject imaginable. Things that are going on right now, Archon told us, what, how many years ago was that, Brother, Brother Lyle? Yeah, 2013, come on now. That's, the black man writes his history in advance. Yes, then he steps out into it and watch it unfold. Yes, That's what the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is doing right now with us. He's giving us history before it happened. Everything. Didn't he tell us about COVID yes, sir. in 2020? The unraveling of a gr great nation? Yes, that was in February. The next month, COVID jumped out like James Brown was sliding across the stage. I mean, he got into people's lives. He puts you on not the good foot, but the bad foot. And you were down. Everybody was touched by COVID moving forward. And has it gone anywhere? No. The minister keeps telling us, don't, don't let your guard down. You know, he's like that great referee in the ring that once he, you know, instructs the fighters, the last thing he says to them, protect yourself at all times. That's all the minister is telling us to protect ourselves. Don't drop our guards. Don't let the enemy get on television with these entertainers and these athletes trying to deceive us that what they have, what the enemy has, is greater than what Almighty God, our Lord, messenger, in our midst is given to us. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan loves us. So let me get right back to self-improvement. I'm sorry, I didn't want to get, I didn't mean to go that far over there, but uh, it was there. Did you know that on Friday, Fridays, you know, I mean, if you're perfect, this probably won't apply to you. But, I mean, my imperfect self, I got to be there every week because I need to, I got to work on me. I mean, I, I got issues. I live in a glass house. Uh, a lot of y'all are too young to remember, but the Temptations had a song that said, if you live in a glass house, don't throw no stones. I don't want pebbles around my house because I got things going on, you know, that I'm working on. I'm a, I mean, I ain't as bad as I used to be. No, no, I'm not. Because of this teaching, right. I've improved exponentially. I mean, if I had to use this teaching of where I was 20 years ago as a yardstick, I, whoo, whoo, I'm an angel by comparison. But I'm not an angel. I'm just saying, if you were to compare it with the old me, come on now. I, I had a head. I had a hat. My hat says FOI now. It says it on my lapel. Back then, it just said nigga. Straight up. Straight nigga. But because of this teaching, I can kick off nigga and I can put on FOI and say that I am a helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a helper of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which leads back to Master Fard Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah. But on Friday, dear family, we, uh, we had some questions that came up in the study group. Very profound questions. I mean, question number one, we could hardly get off that one. You know, we were asked, why do you think that that Savior's Day address, uh, 1991, who is God, was included in the self-improvement study guide? Yeah, that was a, that's a profound question. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the most powerful question or profound question you could ever ask is, who is God? I mean, God's been made a lot of things, right? He's trees, he's wood, he's monkeys, he, and man even say, you know, uh, I mean, he worship everything but what he really is. And here in this lesson, we've been shown from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's wonderful mind and his connection to the God is that God is a man. Surprise? No, 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 really. God is a man. And to make him other than a man is to make him a lesser one. So says the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Come on, what? what? Find anything on this planet as powerful as a lion is, as powerful as an elephant is, as powerful as a whale is. All those assert they, they were put here to serve us. Why and how, do, how can we cause them to submit to us with a highly evolved mind? Which means what? If you want your mind to evolve, you have to study. So, so goes the title of Friday's uh, meeting, Self-Improvement, the Basis for Community Development. And in the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad, well, let's go to the Bible first. In the Bible, it says that when the prodigal uh, son made one step toward the father, the father made two steps toward him. And in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that when you make one step towards Allah, Allah makes a hundred paces towards you. Well, what's the connection? What's the thread that runs through the both of those? The thread that runs through the both of those sayings is that 
we have to do something first. And then the Quran goes on and further says that uh, Allah will never change the condition of a people until they first make a change in themselves. Do you want Allah to help you change? Well, what are you willing to do to change yourself? I was sitting talking to my, my student in the ministry, brother, student minister Lyle, and brother Lyle was saying, he said, brother, yeah, brother Joseph, everybody want, 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 want the post, but they don't want the sacrifice. I said, that's true. Absolutely. Because remember, Jesus had a conversation with a man. The man wanted to know how could he uh, attain the heaven, get in heaven, get, uh, attain the kingdom. And Jesus told him, he said, well, that's easy. He said, do the law. The man said, wait, well, hey, I'm doing that. He said, well, okay, then take everything you got, sell it, you know, and give the money to the poor. And then come on, pick up your cross and follow me. And the minister said, Jesus ain't seen that man no more. Huh? That's real talk. <laughs> it's okay as long as somebody else is doing it. But when we have to physically and psychologically and spiritually be a part of our own correction, no, we don't want to do it. Well, they always say it about us. Where the FOI at? And these are folks in the church. And Brother Rodney said to him one day, he said, listen, these brothers, they got families. They have to work, but they sacrifice their time to go out and get their, help their own people. He said, the question is, where are you? Why aren't you helping out? How come you haven't joined on with us to go out and get our children back? Those are our nieces, our nephews. Those are our children. Where's your love? Jesus ain't never had no church. Jesus was in the highways and the byways. You can't never say we'll find out where the church of Jesus it was 2,000 years ago. No, because he wasn't that kind of teacher. He was in the dirt. He was in the trenches. He was in the mud where his people were. And he was pulling them up. And that's where you see us today. And that's why they always want to know where the real warriors are. I didn't say soldiers. See, a, see most of those, those people, when we had the, a millions more in move, movement, and they were talking about going back to the streets, and we were supposed to be training them, most of them weren't a paycheck. Yeah. So a soldier does, militarily speaking, a soldier does what he's paid to do. They would have been soldiers if they was getting paid. But you know the difference between a soldier and a warrior? A soldier does what he's paid to do, but a warrior does what he has to do. So if you've ever done this work that we're trying to do now, you are in that warrior class. Right. You can say that you are one of those angels that when Allah calls, you're not just any old angel. You become a havoc-making angel because right. you will fight hell and high water to go after our people that are languishing in the mud out there in the streets of Philadelphia and all across this nation. Right. All praise is due to Allah. Well, dear family, I'm, I'm getting hyped. But I guess that's what I'm supposed to do when I come up here. Because my brother is getting ready to come up and he's going to set a fire. I just warmed it up. He getting ready to start a fire. So I hope you got your fire suit, your fire extinguisher. Or better yet, do you have a pen and pad? Because you can take some notes. So let's at this time prepare ourselves. Open up your hearts and your minds and bring to this rostrum our brother, a hardworking soldier, the student regional minister of the Delaware Valley, student minister Rodney Muhammad. Let's bring him on with a loving round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in the most holy name of Allah, the one, the all wise, the true, the living God, we thank Almighty God, the revealer of all truth, the sender of all prophets, of whom we make no distinction. We do thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel, and we thank him for Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. As a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message, I'm most thankful to Allah for his own intervention in our affairs as it was predicted he would intervene. We thank him for coming to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. We cannot thank him enough for raising a servant, a faithful servant who did not fail his people after everyone and everything failed them. We thank him for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, now the exalted Christ, the Mahdi or the Christ figure of the Muslim world. For the two of them whom I never met, I thank almighty God. I thank prophecy and everything that played a role in them meeting because their union produced a spiritual offspring a man that I have met, a man that has connected me with those that I have not met that I 
have access to know them as if I met them. I thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I know the love of Master Fahd Muhammad. I know the love of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because of the love that Farrakhan has for the two of them. And that's why he has that kind of love for us. And so uh, we're connected. All praise is due to Allah. So I greet you with our greeting words of peace. Salam alaikum. Um, thank you all for being out. Um, I want to thank uh, the believers uh, for the wonderful um, outreach to the community with the food giveaway and things. And what, you all just did a splendid job. I could see it on social media. All praise is due to Allah. Thank uh, Sister Linda Muhammad for uh, putting the money up for a truck, I understand, that brought the children water, ice, and pretzels and things like that. And, um, and so it's a good outreach. Um, soon we'll have a believers meeting to talk about our, our local vision uh, and what we want to do right here in the Germantown area. Um, we have to impact the entire city, uh, but you have to really have a good footprint somewhere. And uh, we're at a time that uh, Islam is undergoing its greatest challenge. Uh, we're right at the crossroads of many things, and you have to remember, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us, uh, Savior's Day in Detroit, America is unraveling. Uh, it is the unraveling of a great nation, and everyone that's in her is unraveling. Uh, and as we peel back to show who and what we really are, we want to be the real thing. Um, and that's, that's, that's a little bit of what we want to talk about today uh, for the few minutes we have with each other today. But we certainly want to be reaching out to our community. Uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan reminds us that where we are right now, and you can't deal with black people where you would like them to be. You can't deal with black people about where we used to be. You got to deal with where we are right now. And you have to deal with the state we're in right now. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the current state of affairs requires um, the law of Moses. And Moses brought a strong law to bring order to the community. Uh, we can't mess around with little social workers and this little weak science, social scientific approach about where we are right now. Uh, it's going to take some strong law, and that means a strong code of conduct. Um, you know, we, we can't go around talking about the injustices in that. The prayer we pray, oh Allah, I have been greatly unjust to myself. Um, and so we have to look at ourselves uh, and bring order to ourselves uh, and put on ourselves a strong code of conduct. There's no other way out of this right now. Will we always need that? Uh, perhaps not. But I'm dealing with the state we're in right now. We're willing to murder each other right now. We're willing to rape each other right now. Here's a woman attacked in broad daylight in a building down in Center City. You know, uh, um, the, the um, former emperor of Japan out on a camp was killed. But the one thing they keep talking about was the murder rate is so low in Japan because they have strong gun laws. You got strong gun laws even in Russia. You can't just walk around and go purchase a gun and be walking around. Many countries on earth, they're looking at America coming apart, talking about her rights and her amendment rights and things like that. But you have the right to be intelligent, too, and to respect human life, too. And that don't seem to be coming along with your right to bear a firearm, especially when you just shoot innocent, unarmed, unsuspecting people uh, in this country. So... Um, may Allah help us in this hour, uh, but if we're going to reach people, we got to reach them where they are, not where we'd like them to be. Uh, we thank Almighty God for the laborers here. Thank Almighty God for the believers here. 
um, the gravity. And of course, gravity is built up out of the word grave. The grave is pulling at us. Part of exercise, some go to the gym, some go out walking, they hit the tracks, they do calisthenics, some are in martial arts or whatever we are in, um, the body wants to build up its muscular content right. Right. along with the heart, which really is a muscle, yes, sir. Uh, and keep it up because as we walk on this planet, gravity is pulling at our flesh. And when we don't do anything with our bodies in the way of exercise, you begin to see the body begin to slump because gravity is pulling at it. Well, just as we exercise the body, so the spirit needs exercise. Just as we make the body undergo some kind of pain, we say in the gym, no pain, no gain. If there's no pain in the exercising of spirit, no gain for the spirit. Um, and Paul gives a picture of athletes and how they prepare for the Olympics. And when you're preparing for the Olympics, he said they can't live like the average citizen in this world. The average citizen may stop and say, oh, they're selling murder burgers over there. Let me get one. Uh, the average citizen may stop and eat this, that, and the other. But the athlete that's under training generally has to discipline themselves to a certain type of diet. The athlete that's under training may have to discipline themselves to a certain kind of routine that's right. That's right. that they're undergoing, not only for the body, but for the mind. Right. To stay focused on the goal because when they get to the Olympics, they'll be competing right. with others that uh, are said to have engaged in the same kind of discipline. Come on, come on. So it is with the spirit. There has to be a discipline that we hold on to. The first discipline of the spirit the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us is prayer. Jesus. Prayer is the force, yes, he said, that gives us the energy and the internal strength to do God's work. Yes, In the absence of it, even as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the prayers that I have given you will build self-confidence. It's hard to be confident in a world where most people are fanning you away and don't want to hear the word of God. Most people are saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll come around to it. Maybe one day I'll come up to your meeting, but never show up. Right, right. Uh, and just because we are trying to be praying people, just because we're trying to be law abiding people, it doesn't mean we don't get discouraged by our efforts constantly being turned down. But guess what? Noah was discouraged. That's right. Lot was discouraged. And Jesus said, so discouraged were they that as it was in the days of Noah, yes, and as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be in the last days on the coming of the Son of Man. You'll see more people rejecting the truth of God, the message of God, the light of God, and the wisdom of God but just because you reject God, you can't put God out of the picture. Noah said, oh Allah, as I preach, they reject and turn away from me all the more. He said, then be quiet and follow these instructions that I'm giving you. And so Noah just followed what God was giving him and as he took the planks, crude planks, the Quran says, and he began to bang on the planks, the sound of the hammer 
against the planks was drowning out the sound of the naysayers. Go ahead. Go ahead. The people that were whispering, you couldn't even hear the whisper anymore because the sound of the divine work taking place in the midst of people that were rejecting the message of Noah, he kept banging and kept building in the midst of people feeling that there was no need for what he was building, but they didn't know that behind his preaching was a reality that was coming. And that reality, when it would hit the people, they would see that what they thought was unnecessary is the only damn thing that will get them out of the hell that they are in. We are in the last days. The Son of Man is with us. And he gives us the final call newspaper. He gives us the Nation of Islam charity receipt. He gives us the prayers that the honor boy Elijah Muhammad gave us for our way of devotion. He gives us details so that as we go out and just like Noah was driving the nails into crude planks, so are we in a crude setup. Little temples all over America, but every time you sign your name to a charity receipt, that's the hammer driving. Every time you say a prayer, that's the hammer driving. Every final call that leaves your hand and goes in the hand of someone else, that's the hammer driving. Every guest that you bring in, the hammer is driving into the nails, and you're drowning out the sound of the naysayers. And one day, you're going to have to put the hammer down because God going to be finished with all of us. And if you've accepted him, get into the ark. The divine blueprint that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is setting up for black America. Or stay out of it and suffer the fate of your open enemy. They say... Angels are something either invisible or something floating around. We say they're men. Highly learned. So Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be in the last days on the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Lot, the LGBT community grew real large. In the days of Lot, they took over the government. We of the nation of Islam don't make it a practice to condemn anyone that may be in sin against the will of God. Because we don't see ourselves as clear of sin. Huh? But God, who is not in our condition, God is in a desired condition that we seek. He's in a position to judge. So he records the history. And, uh, some death angels showed up to Lot. The Bible says when the death angels showed up, Lot was at the gate. You know what that means? Lot opens doors for you. Lot, by opening doors, means he was connected well in the city. The angels got in because Lot opened the gate. And he recognized them, but the people of Sodom didn't recognize them. So Lot bowed down. He wanted to take care of these humble and divine guests, but they let him know, you need to get away from this place. Allah has sent us on a detail of death. So they weren't ordinary angels, they were deaf angels. He said, you got anybody that believe? 
You better get them. I said, I got a wife and two daughters. Let me go get them. And both of my daughters are betrothed to men. So let me get their fiancés. We'll pack everybody up and go. He went to try to talk to the men that were betrothed to his daughters. Hell, they didn't want to hear it. So you can get so engrossed in darkness, the best preacher can't get you. You may try to make it the preacher's fault, but you're so engrossed in darkness. Jesus says some people love the darkness more than they love the light. So you can show them all kind of light, and they'll go deeper into the dark. So write them off. Then there were two men, but we say angels are floating around. But those homosexuals, they, they wasn't looking at them as if they was invisible. They was knocking on Lot's door. Lot had took the two men to his house. Lot! Yo, Lot! You got some guests in there. Bring them out that we may know them. See? Now, if you rewind the tape, Lot was with Abraham. And it was so many believers in the mosque that the Bible says the herdsmen of Abraham began to feud with the herdsmen of Lot. I always like to translate it. The lieutenants that were under Abraham started arguing with the lieutenants that was under. Big problem in the house now. So Abraham calls Lot in for a little meat. And uh, he says, your herdsmen and mine feud one with the other. Let there be no strife between me and thee. We are many and we should divide ourselves. So Abraham took the believers with him to Hebron. But Lot looked at the cities of the plains and the Bible said it reminded him of paradise. Maybe we already got a heaven on earth, but the Bible said, but what he didn't know was the abomination of the men inside them cities had already reached the Lord. Now, we already have as Lot made this choice, a scheduled visit. Lot took his family of believers. Well, I, you know, I have to keep going over this and make sure I saw it right. You know, because I'm. Everybody started out believing in God. But by the time the deaf angels got there, where were all the believers? So we could surmise that the same people that was reaching out that wanted them men started out under Abraham's tent. And the appetites overtook the will of God. Like Minister Farrakhan say, the sun can be shining, but something in the way of the sun keep you from getting the sunlight. Your own personal desire that's not in harmony with the light of God. So all these people got lost and turned out. And the deaf angels come in already with the assignment for destruction. 
they, they're going to let Lot go out and try his little ministry to see if he can save everybody just so he know that when God make a decision, he already know what he's doing. So you go on and hold a meeting. He couldn't even get his, his, his future son-in-law. And as it turns out, his wife turned around. And he turns her to a pillar of salt to serve as a sign. That's another whole sermon about her turning to a pillar of salt. Because salt is a preservative. And even though she's going with her husband, she never believed in God. She believed in Lot, but she didn't believe in Lot's God. But Lot could not convey to you the things that he was able to convey had it not been for the living God. But she couldn't see past her husband. Wow. So, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the last days in the coming of the Son of Man. So same-sex marriage is going on everywhere and every, and if you take a position against them, you will lose your job. You lose your possessions. You lose your social standing. And then, how did this happen? See, we're in the end time of all of this, and we're furnished with supreme wisdom. Now, look what the last man is given in the Quran. He's given the Torah. He's not with Moses, but what God revealed to Moses, he's given that. Yes, sir. He's given the gospel. Yes, sir. He's not there 2,000 years ago with Jesus, but what was revealed to Jesus is given to him. He's given Kitab, the book, the Quran. Yes, he's not with Prophet Muhammad. But what was revealed through Prophet Muhammad, he's given it. Each of these books has wisdom, but that ain't enough. The Torah got wisdom. The, the gospel got wisdom. The Quran has wisdom. But after giving him the Torah, giving him the gospel, giving him the Quran, he says, and then he gave him wisdom. See, he took him to the root of wisdom. That's supreme wisdom. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's what God is operating with. Yes. Come on. Right. Supreme wisdom. Why? Because with supreme wisdom, he can destroy the devil's world yeah. in a day yes. and not fall victim to the devil's civilization. That means that, that there's a wisdom that's present that we actually can walk in a world that Paul said Satan is the God of this world. And even though Satan has deceived the whole world, there's a wisdom that we could walk with. Well, there ain't no way we can, we can get out of it if Farrakhan is out of it. He's given us a sign that we can get out of it. All we have to do is close the gap. We can't get out of it if there's a gap between us and him. If supreme wisdom is to come, some supreme teacher has to be present to give it to us. And we don't know if it's superior until we get it. And then try to apply. See, wisdom is not knowledge. We think just knowing a lot of stuff, that don't necessarily make you wise. That's why the Bible don't say pray for knowledge. It says my people suffer for a lack of it. But it didn't tell you to pray for knowledge. It told you pray for wisdom. Because wisdom is knowing how to use your knowledge. We got black folks with PhDs, master degrees, and everything, and look at our condition in America. So just knowing something ain't enough. We have to, 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad took people that hadn't finished high school and did more than people who've been through the colleges and the higher institutions of learning in this country. They marveled at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's work because of the unequaled wisdom that he was functioning with. So when we were at the Watergate Hotel, the minister didn't say the, the knowledge of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said the wisdom, the efficaciousness of the wisdom, it's, it's, it, you can't even dispute it. See, when you can't dispute something, you don't need a fan club. Even your enemies bear witness. You got it going on. So the wisdom is unequal. People come, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, don't play with his teaching. But we play with it. And we leave to go try to find something. Usually, you just have to go and try to tolerate wherever you go and whatever level you want to function at. But if you want to go and function at a supreme level, you have to entertain this. Yes, as Sister Ava said, the, the enemy over us, he can't even write a commentary on this. He doesn't know what to make of this. He had it when he had the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under question. Throughout the night, they raided his room. They brought all this material. They wanted to know about it. He didn't plead the fifth. He answered their questions. They weren't ready for the answers. They're not ready for the answers that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has given them because they feed them right from the wheel. The ministers say, as you're asking the question, Allah is putting the answer in his head. You don't even have to finish with the question. And what Allah does for him, he shows him the root of your motivation for bringing the question up. Because everybody that was asking Jesus questions wasn't trying to learn. They were trying to find a way to trap him. That's how people ask you a series of questions so they can say, uh-huh, I got you involved in this. Yeah, you can't answer this. So they, they're trying to lead you somewhere rather than just ask you what they need to ask. That's why I don't go through a whole lot of question and answer about Islam. And you don't want to take $2 out and get a Final Call newspaper. Because if you get the Final Call newspaper and go to the back page, you can deal with what we want and you can deal with what we believe. Now you're ready to ask some questions. Don't let nobody drive you down some little old rabbit hole about some little point they're trying to make. The minister already said the Islam today ain't about how well you do salat. The Islam today is not whether you fast in Ramadan or not. The Islam today is to get your behind in the street and get our people who are uncivilized and as long as they stay that way, God's going to hold us responsible. Why y'all in the street? I'm trying to get the blood off my hand. Yeah. Um, when we go in the street, we're not going in the street with guns. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said that when the FOI, it has to be an FOI that's really trying to be himself, though. He said. You can't be an FOI trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. But he said, when you do that, God has you traveling in an atmosphere that you walk right into savagery, darkness, confusion, misguidance. But the atmosphere that you're traveling in, it don't unnerve you. Take that paper. I don't want that damn paper and that. Thank you, sir. Just have a good day. You don't have to have somebody make you act like they're already acting in the street. 
well, I told him, nigga, don't, don't be doing this, that, and the other, and he didn't cuss back at me. That's unalike. What's up with them? And the minister said, the women want to help out in the community too. He said, but before you go to the street, sister, what does your home look like? We may think that's unimportant, but you know, people tell me, we need to talk to these young guys on the street. The street ain't dysfunctional. They on the street because the home is dysfunctional. You telling me somebody's in a fine home and I'm not talking about uh, whether they live in Germantown or Mount Airy or something like that, but a fine home is a home where things are decent and in order. That don't take a mansion. That don't take one of these suave looking condos. We lived in little homes and stuff uh, with three steps out front. You got you some bleach on Saturday morning. Come on, somebody. Clean your steps off. How about that? You cleaned your house. I remember when I had my first apartment, man, you put Aretha Franklin on. And it's playing on the, on the remember we had the, what was it, Pioneer or Panasonic turntables. And yeah, you put that on, you just get you some Clorox and some other stuff, you mop your floors and stuff. We ain't got nothing but pillows in there. We, ain't, we didn't have, you know, and, um, but your house was clean. You put your little blue lights on and the thing, you know, it's psychedelic. But you clean your place up. And don't use the excuse, I ain't married yet. You live by yourself, then you get up and clean your place up. Well, I ain't married yet. Learn how to cook. Anybody can fix a, a pot of beans. And if you keep doing it, you'll get better at it. You can't be in the street eating all kinds of stuff every night because you're not cooking. What is the home like before we go out? Because in a lot of cases, the way the home is, it's got a lot to do with the atmosphere you're traveling in. Hard to travel in a peaceful atmosphere and you coming out of a home that's a hell hole. So let's not worry about the streets till we worry about the home. And make sure it's right. We in the end time. We, you know, um, people from thousands of years ago, you can read something and you can do something over and say, we're going to do better this time. See, the nation failed once. Now we got a chance to do better this time. But that's, that's mercy because really in life you don't get do-overs. You got to live with whatever mistake you made and just try not to make it no more. So this is the last walk we have. And from the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that I'm getting is, we about to face something that no other righteous community ever faced. We're not getting ready to go through what they went through back during this time. What you, what you and I are about to go through is something worse than what they went through. They're only waiting for his absence. I looked last night, I woke up about, because I went to sleep early, I woke up about between 1.30 and 2. So I'm fanning through and I found the movie I like with Gregory Peck, The Boys from Brazil. And, um, you know, it's based on a novel, but, you know, the mad doctor, Mengele, he took two liters of Hitler's blood before the end of World War II and some scrapings of his skin and kept it somewhere 
because he said Adolf Hitler refused to have children because he knew they would never grow up to be powerful under the shadow of such a great man, a wickedly great man. So Dr. Mengele was trying to clone him. And he made like 94 clones and had to plant them in families that were the same type of family Adolf Hitler grew up in. Because the man said, well, don't you want to, if we clone, you'd have a planet full of Mozarts and, uh, you know, talking about all these great musicians and stuff. He said, yeah, but when the father's a civil servant and dies at 65, while the mother is 42 years of age, that's not Mozart. Er Lieferman looked and said, when we look at all the dynamics and the environment that he got to grow up in, he's trying to reproduce Adolf Hitler. Because Hitler said, only a clone, the original of me. Now, they think like this already. <laughs> Stem cell talks about growing another organ and that. So cloning a human being, I believe they've already done it. But I said to myself, they don't have the wisdom of how to take another human being and through pedagogy, not just what you teach them, but how you teach it to them, can actually reproduce your mind in the student. That's why Master Fard Muhammad said that he could make one just like him. And when he did it with Elijah, Elijah looked at fire kind of said, Allah has made me to take his place among the people. I'm making you to take mine, the progressive tense, right? I'm able to take you through certain steps and things that your mind will be built up like my mind is built up. That even when I'm not there, I am there because I've reproduced myself in you. He just needed a humble servant. Now, he tells Elijah, Master Farad Muhammad, I will only accept myself in them. So we do good to pay attention to the steps that Allah has taken the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because in order for us to become like him, as he's becoming like them, there's steps we're going to have to take. Thus, we're right back at facing a great test before we come out of this. Um, in the end time, the Bible calls the book Revelation. Um, Revelation is not the last book of the Bible. According to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it's the first book. The Bible starts out with a revelation coming to Yaqub. When you, when you pronounce Yaqub in the Hebraic tongue, Hebrew is Jacob. So when you go to Genesis, that comes from the word genes, you see Jacob doing a genetic work, only they take human beings out and they put sheep in there. So that they can, they can symbolize it with sheep, but he starts out with black sheep and then they start spotting them and pretty soon he ends up with a whole spotted herd, but the sheep were black when he started. Because Mr. Yaqub started out with black people. He did not leave on a boat with white folks. Y'all better listen there. 59,999, they were not white, they were black. And it shows you, you can get angry enough, disappointed enough, that you're, you're willing to turn yourself to a process that'll make a devil out of you. The ministers say, oh, yes, we always had dissatisfaction, but it, it, it was um, what you call positive discontent. 
Positive discontent says, you know, I live here, but I'd like a better place. Positive discontent says, I'm driving this, but I'd like to one day get that type of vehicle and do something better. Positive discontent says, this is, this is what I'm making now, but I want to build something so that it makes even more and I do better. That's positive discontent. But when you're disappointed about wanting God's place and you can't have it, that kind of discipline, that's not positive discontent. And so what it ends up being is that you can, you desire, but you cannot attain. So since I can't attain God, what I'm going to do is mess up the people that's trying to follow you. When he says, not only will I come from the left, not only from the right, from before them, from behind them, but even on thy straight path. What does that mean? I'm coming right up in the house of religion. That's why in the end time family, you know, it's not just principalities and rulers of darkness. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. Men and women of the cloth involved in a satanically energized world that we're in. And so I started out talking about gravity because it comes out of the word. The grave is calling for us. And if we don't hear God's call, then I can guarantee you the call you hear is for the grave. That's why the minister said, look, uh, he's a traffic cop. When I was coming here today, because the fire truck had to come in, somebody was coming around. They thought we were just slowing down. They wanted to go. They said, uh-uh, hold it. Fire truck is trying to come in. So when you're a traffic cop and you see traffic coming, you put your hand up. That means stop or slow down. Well, a traffic cop is, is slowing up our walk to the grave. We shouldn't be rushing to the grave like we are right now. When you live under confusion and darkness, when you live... Um, uh, and you're in a more savage state. Even though you're in a human form, you live like a savage. You're rushing to the grave. How to eat to live slows you up from rushing to the grave. Don't be eating all day. And then he gets to the point, don't eat unless you're really hungry. Don't look at a time and say, well, I should be hungry. It's five. <laughs> if you're not hungry, you know, drink some tea or something and keep going. But we'll look and say, well, you know what? I'll probably be hungry at five. It's three. I better go on and eat now. That way I won't be hungry at five. <laughs> I'll just, just tell you how we know man's mind and what it suggests to him. Mm. These are lessons that the devil wants us to forget. They're traveling with the wise man, and the wise man is operating under a level of wisdom never seen before never heard before, never experienced in a life before. So you can't have a comprehensive knowledge of it because it hasn't been here before. Right, right. It's so deep that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to tell the minister, brother, you don't have to study. And immediately, with our limited knowledge, we think, oh, you know, you can just be in the spirit and you don't have to study. The minister said, that didn't mean I didn't have to study. What he's, what he's telling me is something's going to be revealed through me. I can't study what, what ain't been revealed yet. He said, it's only after it comes through me. Once it comes through me, now we can look at it and begin to study it. Are you following what I'm saying? God studied 42 years before he came to get us. How would he not have to study? But that tells you that we don't have everything. 
for the honorable Elijah Muhammad to say, brother, don't change the teaching while I'm gone. And if you are faithful, watch what he said. I'll bring the new teaching to you. Oh, so there's another teaching coming. Well, what is this teaching? From everything that I've heard, it's the wake up message. It's designed to wake us up. We don't realize how far down we were in moral and spiritual death. It kills the mind. The mind can't even have vision. So men get up with no vision. You're destined to just walk the hood. Waiting to see what they've set up for you. And I can tell you right now, the only thing set up for us out there are booby traps. And, and every day, one of us gets caught in one of those traps. Where's so-and-so? He got arrested. Where's so-and-so? He was on parole, so he went back. Where's so-and-so? Well, we have to go down to the morgue to identify his body. These are the traps that are set up for us. And if we want to live, we're going to have to turn to one who came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Everything that the enemy shows us uh, about life is really death, the minister said. Passing itself off as life. So the minister said, Supreme Wisdom, as we keep studying it, eventually the white man is not even a burden to you. Now, is he on the planet raising hell? Yes. Is he lying and deceiving? Yes. Those that do it. And that to the point that he got his own people unhappy. You know, black people didn't get together and go attack the Capitol January 6th. White folks got together to do that. Black people are not on roofs shooting down all kinds of people and everything. They, they're, they're falling apart. And even though they're in rulership, they're unhappy with their rule. Supreme wisdom is supposed to take us away from him even while he's here. Yes. And start building your life based on the unequal wisdom that's found here. Right. Come on. What does that mean? That's a small sign that you're the one person on your block that's not victimized. Come on. Right. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Doesn't mean we're all the way there yet. He's going to keep trying to think. You know how they can scare us? Remember we had Dick Gregory before? And he said, white folks just know how to scare the hell out of you. The mailman stopped by and leave one letter. He said, you can pick it up and said, final notice. He said, he looked at it, final notice? That means I won't be hearing from you no more. No, think about how he has things set up to scare you. This is the last time we'll be contacting you. Or some law office. You see the little letterhead up there. And here they come. With some, as if you can't go get a lawyer and refute something. They know how to shake your world up. Tax lien and everything. And Satan's world is united and built on cosmic principles of number one, force, right? Greed, right? Selfish ambition. You can be ambitious, but selfish ambition and sinful pleasure. That's what his world's built on. So I don't care what, what you do, you can just sit down and resist him. Eventually, force will come. Some people said, well, you know what? We're not really citizens. So we don't have to pay a mortgage. I get it. You know, you say, but you don't know enough about all that. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he paid a mortgage. 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad paid taxes for the businesses that were supposed to be taxed. Uh, but you say, okay, we were brought here as slaves, we're not real citizens, um, I'm not gonna pay a mortgage. Okay, he gonna send you some notices. He's going to warn you of the delinquent state that you're in, right? And, and, and um, eventually, as you ignore all those, just keep sitting there. Force is going to come in. They tape something up at your door. This property has been seized. That's about the last thing. Next thing, they're knocking on your door to put you out. They're going to force you out and take the property. You say, but I, I paid for this building. I paid, I, I paid it off. If you don't pay the property taxes, they're going to come right back in and take it from you again as if you never put a dime on it. And they'll take it by force. Right now, we have so many entangled titles because you live in a house where the parents owned it, then you were living there and they died. So you just been there going to work, going to do whatever you do. You thinking it's already understood I'm their child, I got the house, but you find out you didn't do the proper paperwork. So now the title to the property, if it don't have your name on it, it's entangled and with no will, it didn't transfer the property. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So there, there are thousands of homes right now that we're in that we rightfully should own. We grew up in these neighborhoods and everything, but they're taking these things right out from up under us because of an entangled title. So you can't even assume things in this world. You got to make sure that the will, just like the will of God is documented. You can open a book and read what the will of God is. If, what is our will as it relates to our material possessions? So I'm reading that um, the, the children of the baby boomers who own over 60% of the wealth in America are about to inherit. You hear what I said? They're not getting ready to earn it. They're about to inherit almost three trillion dollars in wealth. You know why? Because the parents can't live forever. So the house, the stocks, the bonds, all the stuff just goes to the children. They're gonna inherit wealth. We're the only social group sitting here with very little to inherit, if anything. Everybody gotta start at square one. And that's the way the enemy has designed things. We, we have to talk more about the redlining and the things that they have done over the years to cripple our state and what, what we are in. But just know first that without a wisdom, and in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you have an example. He owns property, but he don't have no mortgages. So he'll tell you in a minute, they, they can come take it from you even if you own it free and clear. But though he owns his free and clear, he can make it more difficult for them. Right. See? And they can't get in around him because when you operate in this wisdom and you get beyond him being a burden to you, you know how to work with him. That's right. So the minister said once, he comes back to his farm in Buffalo, Michigan, and he's surrounded by white neighbors. And he looks, and they, they just honor him and are glad to have him as a neighbor. And he's preaching that the white man is the devil. He's preaching that the black man is God. He's preaching that our hour to come into rulership is present. But he found out when he's away and traveling and working 
Mother Khadija has taken things that have grown off the farm and the way Allah has done it, it's growing better there right. than anywhere around them. And she's sharing it with the neighbors and everything, which is, which is what, what, what a, a labor in Islam, that's one of the best things his wife can do is make friends for the family right. in the environment that they live in. So when he drives home, the benefit of what Mother Khadija had done in the surrounding area and that is witnessed by him when he comes in. But my point is, um, if they're a burden to you, you can't even make your way over there to work with them. No, he's so far into the wisdom that has come. See, that there, there are some whites that are high up that can see the truth of what Allah has given to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We don't have to sit here and speculate about what this can be done. We got to live an example of what it's doing. In God's servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I talked about the Time Magazine dinner that he went to and they lined up just to shake his hand. See, you can't go by the few white folks that are heckling and get a government official to say something about Louis Farrakhan being an anti-Semite, hating whites and all of this, but them white folks lined up to shake his hand. The same kind of white folks that don't want you living next door to them. Unless you're in a domestic capacity. But when it comes to Louis Farrakhan, he was promised Allah will take you to the pinnacle of success. Not in the next world, in this world's life. Where Satan rules, God is going to cause you to be exalted. See, it's Allah who promotes and demotes. This is all we have going for us. We don't have nothing else going for us. You can't add to this. This has been carefully thought out over trillions of years. He knew exactly what would bring us up. If he could recite Six cycles of history going back. Come on, come on. And each cycle is 25,000 years of wisdom called Quran. And, 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 and we know that um, in the Muslim world, there are people who can recite this Quran from cover to cover. So if you can recite the Quran without reading it from cover to cover, that's a cycle of history that you were able to recite. Are you listening? So if you can, if you can recite five or six Qurans, but, and there are other Qurans. I told you, we asked Brother Jabril, he said the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us they locked up in a vault in Mecca. See, we're just glad to make Hajj. But with the understanding of Islam and Muslim today, which is so much greater, we know that even Mecca has something over there greater than what we've been going over there for. Come on, right, come on, right, right. Quran locked up in a vault. Can you see pulling one of them out? And it's covering a 25,000 year cycle? And if you could read the Arabic, you won't see devil in there because he wasn't made yet. You won't see the wars and the murder that's going on now reflected in the scriptures because th this hadn't started on the planet yet. All that's in this cycle. And what we know about this one that comes is that those that make the cycle and tell you when it's going to begin and when it's going to end, it says they saw no end to his wisdom. So if they saw no end to his wisdom, 
then this one, he's breaking up the cycles. And he'll go beyond a 25,000 year period. What kind of book will you write for that? Because as good as this Quran is, 100% truth, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it only takes us to the door to hereafter. You can carry it with you, but it won't do nothing for you on the other side. You say, well, no, I need to read about the devil. He won't be there. You reading about somebody that's gone now. <laughs> so these books can't, what I'm trying to tell you is Bible and Quran, they can't serve us beyond. This is the time that their utility is the greatest for the human being. And our failure, our failure, to take full advantage of them will be our own detriment. So family, uh, the week's coming. We want to dive into the nation's program. Yes, sir. Um, we can't get away from that. Repetition was the way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught. That's the way God teaches. You say, has God run out of information? No, he realized we ain't really drinking what he gave us already. He has to keep repeating it. You got to keep hearing it. And the Quran says a reminder is a prophet to the believer. Anytime you see somebody getting a, a divine reminder and they're cursing it, they don't they, they stop believing. And no Muslim can hold their Muslim life together, only praying, fasting during Ramadan, and paying charity. And this time we live in, the minister said, if you're not working, that's why your spiritual life is falling apart. And the work of the civilized man is to make sure that the uncivilized are getting civilization. That's the Islam today. That's our way of devotion. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Look. All right, family. Anyone out for the first time, never been out with us before? Thank you so much. Look, we just want to ask a question. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, if you're out for your first time, never been with us before, if you feel that what you've heard is the truth and you feel that it's good for us as a people, his hand is extended using our hand to reach out to your hand, to say, let's join hands and let's get in God's army. You really can't join this. God already made you from birth his own. We just didn't know it. We, didn't, we thought we was joining Islam, but we really was just accepting the nature that he had already created us in. And our way of devotion and our understanding of Islam is that no one else can make us a Muslim. We're already that. We just have to accept it. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody can help us to see it more and its value and we can accept more of it, but we can't join it. Come on. You can't join what you already are. That's right. That's right. Is that right? Yes, so, so we accept our own and then we start being ourselves. If you'd like to do that, come on up and shake my hand on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you, black man. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Tall here. All right. Are you willing to just uh, share a little information with Brother David Hassan? He's going to talk with you. This brother Tahir, let's give him a big round of applause. Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else? If you're a little shy, you can come on up and see the secretary at the table. We're going to put that in. Brother David had a name of, what's his name? Brother Talib. Uh, where's Brother Talib? Just recited today. Come on up. Come on up, brother. All praise is due to Allah. All right. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Brother Talib. He, and he recited just today. We got to learn our, our home. And this is our heavenly home. The, the Negro belief is that we're not at home yet. We got to die and float up, you know. Earth is our heavenly home. 
You just got to start living heavenly while you're instead of earthly. How about that? Huh? So it's an elevated state of living right here on this planet. And it makes you travel in a mental atmosphere, you know, where you're not bugged down with all this stuff. You know, why be bothered with killings all day? Who going to get killed today? Who am I going to kill? Who going to try to kill me? And that, man, that's not the kind of life God wants us to live. So all of our young people, we got to make all men and boys join the FOI. Thank you, Brother Talib. Thank you so much. All praises due to Allah. Long live Muhammad. So Brother, Brother Joseph's going to come and finish off our meeting. But we thank you so much, beloved. Uh, and we hope you keep coming out. We have some community meetings getting ready to start. And so we hope you'll be on board with us. We've got to do everything we can in this fine, these final hours uh, to reach our folks. Okay? Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum. All praises due to Allah, dear family. Let's give him another round of applause. Our Delaware Valley Student Regional Minister, Rodney Muhammad. Brother Rodney has already done the acceptance, so the only thing left in our final aspect of our meeting today is our charity portion. So we'll move very quickly. Thank you, mighty FOI. Oh, here we go. Keep it going, Brother Russell. Just give me the number at the end. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> give him a round of applause, dear family. And as I was stating, thank you, dear family, for giving of your time and of charity. And remember, we're here today on Sundays but we also have a meeting tomorrow uh, at 7.30 right here for the brothers. Uh, it's the FOI, FOI class, Brother Rodney, attention in the back. FOI meeting tomorrow, 7.30. So brothers, if you would like to come out and learn more about what you heard today, stop out tomorrow, 7.30. We have an orientation class. And of course, for the uh, registered and processing brothers, you know what's going on. Come on to your class. And on Wednesday. Uh, we don't have it here yet, but there's the time and what must be done. That's sent from headquarters in Chicago. You can log on to, is it? Yeah. NOI.org. That's for the Wednesday meeting. And on Fridays, we have self-improvement, the basis for community development. If you would like to get the homework assignment every week, go to study.noi.org and register and the homework assignment will be sent to you. You get on at 8.30 on Friday and we have a wonderful class. I mean, there are circles set up, and you get to, you know, exchange, share your thoughts with brothers and sisters as it pertains to the subject matter from all over the planet. As far away as England and, and the islands, our people are on, and you get to hear the beautiful accents and their representation and their perspective of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called Self-Improvement, the Basis for Community Development. And on Saturdays. We have our sisters class, women only class. I see the sisters, give them a round of applause now. Come on, a nation can rise no higher than this woman. And if you wanna be one of the women who will be remembered thousands and thousands of years from now, come on out to this class and get, get yourself set up in there with the sisters who are being raised to the pinnacle of success in this civilization and also the hereafter in the MGT and GCC class. So come on out, sisters, if you want to learn more, if you haven't done so already. And then if you finish, once you finish that, come right back here on Sundays, 11 o'clock a.m., and get another, you know, wonderful plate of the truth of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, dear family, I think I've extinguished all that needs to be said today. If all hearts and minds are at ease, so we can close with prayer. Please stand for prayer. In the manner in which you are most comfortable, <clears throat> follow along silently. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live, Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, and not the path of those upon whom thy wrath has brought down, and nor of those who go astray after hearing thy teaching. Say, He, Allah, is one. Allah is he upon whom we all depend. He neither beget, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that none deserves to be served or worshipped, besides Allah, who appears to us in the person that's your master, W. Fard Muhammad, 
And we thank him for giving to us his wise choice in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, we're indebted forever for their Messiah that walks among us today in the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. It is in those names we pray. I mean. Dear family, let us go in peace and remember, we are never to be the aggressor, but if we are aggressed upon, we don't just fight with those who fight with us, we fight like hell with those who fight with us. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>